All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of the AWS Blogger. Actually, this is take two on version 17 release notes with OBS Ninja, Steve Segman. Steve, thanks for joining me. Hey, John, pleasure to be here. All right, I got to tell the audience, this is a big fub by me. Uh, recording, make sure you don't overwrite your previous recording. Uh, that was a gotcha. I was trying to troubleshoot something with Steve and I uh, just messed up completely. Whatever it is, Steve, it's been a while since we did version release notes. Version 16 was a couple months ago. Version 17 has some awesome and cool features that we're going to wrap up here in the next 15 minutes. So thanks for joining me. My pleasure. Okay. So one of the things that I really liked about version 17 release notes was your green screen and virtual effects background. Can we jump right into that? Absolutely. So we can enable uh, green screens and virtual effects by appending to the URL effects. And when you come in now, you get an option to select uh, a green screen or a virtual background. And you can select a local image. You also can have a blurred background, but my background's already a little bit blurred. Uh, as a director, you can enable that for a guest in the director's room as well as a toggle, uh, but if you join the room without that added, you will not get the option. So it's only an option if you actively allow a, a guest to enable it. And you have that full controls there in the director's room on some of the customization. We'll show you that here shortly. Another the one that you thought was really important, which I see a lot of value with it, is the custom codec. You wanna talk a little bit about that? So. Absolutely. In in the director's room, you can have uh, you have the option to enable a low CPU broadcast mode. It only works when you have the broadcast mode also enabled. Normally, that's a, a director resharing their virtual cam to an audience. The challenge uh, and the reason for the feature was OBS Ninja, because we're in the browser, it will encode a custom video stream per get connected guest. So if you have 20 guests in a room, you are encoding 20 streams, one for each guest. A lot of computers cannot handle that. So it took me a little bit of while to figure out, figure out a good solution here, but what I settled on for now is a custom codec I created, and it uses motion images, in this case, WebP format images. Uh, one of the limits there was Apple didn't support WebP image format until recently. Now that it has with Safari, I can enable that feature. And the concept is you as a director convert the video into image frames. When a guest connects, they can request an image frame and it doesn't need to be re-encoded for that particular guest because it, you've already encoded it once. Uh, so for 20 people in a room, you can just send them images as needed and it will generally stream at around 15, 20 frames a second per guest. The resolution is a little bit low because streaming motion images is not most efficient in terms of bandwidth, uh, but it is very efficient in terms of CPU. So you can run relatively cool, support a room of 20 people, and they can all still see uh, your, your virtual cam output. Now, you're also showing us right now some of the customizations available. You see the toggle there for virtual backgrounds. Uh, he's also showing you the low CPU. But if you could show everybody right there within the URL how that changes with every toggle that you implement, and then you can send that URL to your guests, and all these features are enabled by default. Absolutely. So this, this customized tab is available for both the invite and for the OBS scene. And as you press the button, the URL on the invite link changes automatically. Now these are the short forms generally of the parameters. There's also a longer long form that you can see and you can link out to that parameters page there. And you'll get a list of all the parameters, but uh, you can generally just toggle these parameters and create custom invite links. And then you can copy it, send it to a guest. A lot of these features are driven by the community, uh, customers, people that are utilizing it. Real quick, how does one you know, go about just saying or suggesting a new feature release for OBS Ninja and the use case for it? So 
the primary way of doing it is dropping by Discord. We have a Discord for, uh, channel at discord.obs.ninja. And there is a channel called Feature Requests. You can drop your feature request therein. I generally like to have a discussion on why you're asking it, what problems you're having, whether that feature already exists or not. Uh, often we can solve the issue without having to do any work. Uh, you can also come to GitHub and create an, uh, a feature request as an issue there. If you're familiar with GitHub, that's a great way to make a feature request as well. But I'm open to listening through email, through Reddit, or however else you want to make a request. All right. Now, the next topic here, and a lot of the features that uh, we were previously talking about was is some of them are there in the director room. Do you want to share some of the director room features, uh, the nice condensed, uh, you know, non-scrolling sections? And Absolutely. So I'll, I'll join the room as a guest just so I have something to show. Yep. What we see here is we have a new layout to the interface. We have some accordions. Uh, we can now access ad additional parameters. Uh, the key parameters are still available. I had to see mute solo. All those things are still there. Uh, solo now will automatically unmute you when you're solo talking with a guest, for example. Uh, one of the key new features for the director is this concept of scenes. That was actually introduced in 16, version 16, but now they're available as dedicated buttons. So they're a little more accessible. Uh, one of the cool concepts of scenes is you can create uh, multiple scenes in an, within an OBS scene, and you can kind of treat the OBS Ninja scenes as slots. And so when a guest joins the room, you can add them to slot one, add them to slot two. And as guests join and leave the show, you can very easily place them into those uh, specified positions without having to juggle uh, stream URLs. You don't have to copy and paste anything from OBS Ninja into OBS once the show's set up. You can just populate uh, specific slots via that mechanism. Uh, there's also a new scene stats button. This gives you insights into the scenes uh, that are taking place within OBS. So you can see the resolution of a video, the quality, the bit rate, problems it's, it's having. And so you can get a, a sneak peek of those issues without having to go into OBS and uh, disturb the live broadcast. Uh, we can then go to more advanced controls. A lot of the community has been asking for more conferencing-like controls, but also more mixing controls from within OBS Ninja. And one of the key ones that was requested was the ability to highlight a guest. So you can now specify a particular video, a screen share, or a guest, and you can make them full screen. Everyone in the room sees them full screen. The OBS Ninja scenes sees that person as a full screen video. And this way you can toggle uh, a single person on and off. Uh, there's also an automated way of highlighting guests now. It's called Active Speaker. Uh, you can enable that also through a toggle in uh, this page here, but we can also type it in manually as active speaker. And this feature will highlight anyone who's actively speaking within a group room. And that's based on the average loudness of that speaker. So if someone's speaking loudly and, and consistently, they'll appear as an active speaker. If there's multiple active speakers, you'll see the scene auto mixing them all together. And when there's no one speaking anymore, it will show the last person to be speaking. And so it's an auto mixing uh, effect, works well with larger rooms, and it was a highly requested feature for version 17. Uh, there's other features added. You can change the URL of a guest. This is a pretty blunt, uh, function, but you can essentially forward a connected guest to a target website. There's a, there's currently a transfer button with an OBS Ninja where you can transfer a user to a particular room, but that has some limitations. And when you transfer a user, you can't change the settings of the user. And when the user gets disconnected or reconnects with their browser, they, re they refresh, 
They don't stay in the transfer room, they return to the original room. With this change URL button, you can send them to a whole new invite link with new parameters, a, a new main room. You can even send them to alternative web pages. Uh, so that, this is a brute force feature, but a lot of users want to have remote control over their guests. And this is an easy way to let them do uh, pretty much anything. Now, I like the active speaker having somebody up front when they're talking. So say I'm talking now, I'll be popped in there. If you and I are talking side by side, we'll be next to each other like we're in the room having a conversation. I really like that addition. Uh, you talked about the change URL. And most people use the transfer like you mentioned. But if uh, something that you mentioned to me, if they disconnect and reconnect, they're going back to the original room. This URL, if they go to that, then they're holding that place. They're uh, they're back in there with all their settings, uh, along with all the effects and the parameter settings. So that's actually pretty cool. I agree. Uh, I, I'm going to definitely listen to feedback. I'm sure that there's lots of ways to refine this change URL. Maybe just edit the URL, for example, as an option. So that might be something in version 18 if there's feedback for it. Now, a couple of the other things we were talking about is you change the visualization of having somebody on mute. Uh, there's a lovely little red bar coming up there. You've kind of inspired or got some of your inspiration from a little lone dot device. There you go. That's a <laughs> Oh, uh, perfect. I, I do like the red. I think where I'm seeing it in my eyesight, that red jumped out at me and I didn't realize. And I think I asked you, I was like, wait, wait, what is that red bar? And it's mute. Well, I could have easily seen that down below, but I didn't see that. I The red bar, that's a perfect ad. It sounds so small, but that's good. It was totally user feedback. Um, exactly how it was implemented uh, was based on some discussion, but the general feedback was, we need to make me more prominent. And this was an easy way of doing it. Yep. Now, another addition, you did some uh, video stats or a video indicator. If somebody has their video on or off, correct? Oh, absolutely. So let me uh, select my camera as a director here. Yep. So now you see as a guest side by side. If I meet my video as a director, it now in the bottom corner will say that the director is present in the room, but they are uh, not visible. And it will show you a little green icon as well that it lets you know that you're talking. Um, I, 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 I like that. First of all, I like the pop-up, by the way, but it also gives you visualization to who else is in the room and not that you're just there by yourself. They just turn off the camera and you can see all, everybody. That's a really, um, once again, another nice ad. Absolutely. That was uh, based on the fact that I, with version 16, version 16.4, I guess, we started to hide empty videos that were just audio only. It was cluttering the window a lot, but that then made it hard to tell how many people were in the room, yep. who was there. And this way we can retain the label and, and still have some visibility. So uh, I'm still open to feedback and I'm sure we'll evolve this over time. Yeah, everybody, I'll let you know, I'll put version release notes in the description. I'll also put the Discord link in the description. Somewhere around here or here, you'll see version 16. Uh, I'll drop that one and for you to view on how we progressed here. Uh, before I wrap this up, Stephen, do uh, you remember that I put together uh, how to install OBS Ninja on AWS video yep. and share that out? I, I got to ask you, what was your feedback on there or the community feedback? Because I got a lot of views and people thought it was pretty awesome. I got a surge of people on Discord asking questions about uh, customizing uh, their own installations, uh, issues related to their own specific uh, deployment. Uh, essentially, I saw a pretty big uptake in people doing <laughs> their own deployment of OBS Ninja, which is exciting. Uh, so whatever you did was definitely effective. Uh, all I did was work with you. Then I installed it myself, I did a video or two, captured some of the stuff, sent it to you. Uh, you know what? I felt like an OBS Ninja like guru there after installing it, my own AWS de deployment and spinning up with my own DNS name it was just, it's pretty cool to do that. Now there's a lot of automation you can put in here, but we won't get to that right now. Um, 
Is there anything else you'd like to add on version 17 release before we wrap it up? Uh, perhaps just mentioning that there are uh, an, an iOS app and an, and an Android app also available. Uh, those weren't really talked about with the uh, when they were actually released, but uh, the Android app allows you to screen share and the iOS app is in the App Store. So now, everybody, that's something you're going to talk about. I'm going to have to do a recording or a quick video tutorial uh, on the, you know, the iOS app. I have to tell you that I find it super awesome that you created this app and got it onto Apple. I was once a very, very old developer and got my own app put on there in a dev, dev type thing. So I know how much hard trouble it is just to get it approved through the process. So I definitely, I, I, you know, I applaud you for taking that effort and making it available to everyone. My pleasure. Definitely room for improvement on that app, but first steps. I agree with you, but once you get it out there and people give you feedback, you listen to them and you do the next thing. You add on to it and you make it better. Uh, before we wrap it up, Steve, anything else? Nope. Uh, report any bugs you find, I guess. That, that'd be highly appreciated. Uh, version 17 is dropping right about now. So please check it out. Yeah, will do. Now I will have this video out hopefully in the next day. If I do not overwrite it again, as soon as I'm done with this, I gotta have to relabel it and make that mistake. Steve, thank you so much for doing this video and all your hard work on OBS Ninja. The community loves it. The feedback I receive on the videos, I like, love sharing with you because I have to tell you the, the product, it's not about me doing the videos, but it's a highlighting something that is totally free and everybody enjoys using. I, I always look forward to these videos with you. So thank you so much. I, I appreciate the exposure. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Steve, for quickly doing this and look forward to this video.